I'm off the coast of Italy at the moment on one of the four Sea Shepherd boats that there are around the world. This is the Sea Eagle and currently we are hunting for illegal fishing lines with octopus traps. It's a whole big story that we're gonna get into and it's bloody tough work, let me tell you. As a lot of you would already know, Riley and I have been on an around the world tour showing you some of the most unique vessels. This story is pretty special and I feel really grateful to be here and that I can bring this to you. Riley and I found Greenpeace to begin with. Super interesting and how Sea Shepherd evolved from that and how it's continuing to evolve is so interesting and some of the things they do is incredible. The crew of Sea Eagle are currently targeting illegal octopus traps, which are contributing to the severe depletion of the Mediterranean monk seal's diet. These guys primarily eat up to three kilos of octopus per day. Sadly, the monk seal is critically endangered, with fewer than 700 individuals surviving. Join me and my mate Julia on board as we learn about Sea Eagle, her fight against what campaign director Andre Morello calls a slaughter of octopuses, squids and cuttlefishes in the area, and what this mission means for one of the rarest marine mammals in the world. Yes! <laughs> This coffee has me feeling super nostalgic. Riley and I actually used to have an Italian press on the mono hull. I mean, the whole thing just reminds me of Riley and him and the kids flew back to Bali today. So I'm just like missing him and the kids like crazy. So this is our little Airbnb in Porto Piombino. That's where we are, Julia and I. Julia is our friend. She wanted to stick around to come aboard the Sea Shepherd and there was a spot open because to cut a very long story short, basically when we arrived in the UK, the Border Patrol said, oh, your son nearly only has six months validity on his passport. We applied for a new passport for Lenny, but in Italy, it was going to take a month. We didn't want to hang around Italy for a month to wait for his passport. And in the end, the boys had to fly home before that six months became a problem because we wouldn't get let back into Indonesia. So Riley decided to take one for the team, go back to Bali, and I get to go aboard the Sea Shepherd boat by myself to train. I'm kind of happy myself. This is a big deal. Usually it's Riley and I doing everything together. I'm glad we've got Julia. She's awesome. Julia is awesome. Hello world. Hello. Actually our friend Forrest, who you guys have met, introduced us to her not too long ago and we've been best buds ever since. How are you this morning, Jules? Really good. How about you? <laughs> Pretty good. We just had a laughing fit. <laughs> we went out last night and we met some of the Sea Shepherd crew and they told us, did you guys bring any old clothes? because apparently you get covered in mud pulling up these illegal fishing nets. And so <laughs> we don't really have any clothes we want to destroy. So this morning, we're actually gonna go find an op shop <laughs> to um, grab some last minute items, including shoes. They said, do you have enclosed shoes? And I guess I missed the memo. My only enclosed <laughs> shoes are my Nike running shoes and I'm not wearing those. So we're going shopping this morning. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> I don't know if I could bring myself to wear that. So we ended up just buying some plain, or well, I actually just bought this plain shirt. And I didn't mean to buy some cool shoes. I found these and they're awesome. I'm so excited. I'm not gonna wear these while we're pulling in the nets covered in mud. <laughs> but we did need enclosed shoes for the boat and I had none, so ah, so happy. Today's sponsor, you guys, is AG1. Super grateful to be carrying AG1 every single place we go. Now we're aboard the Sea Eagle and I know that I'm covered for all of my daily vitamins and minerals. AG1 is actually what bridges the gap in your daily nutrition. So I go to bed at night knowing that I've had all the things that scientists indicate is essential for human health. It's based on science, which I absolutely love. I also love that it tastes great. It is green, but let me tell you, it's such an easy habit to get into because it does taste so nice. It's kind of like a pineapple, a little bit of apple, but nothing too sweet. 75 vitamins and minerals, pre and probiotics for your gut health, which is super important for your overall health. It has adaptogens, antioxidants, it supports your energy levels and your immunity. I actually have a subscription that gets sent to my mom's house 
house in Western Australia and I get her to forward it on to whatever location I am <laughs> in the world. But no matter what, I always have some on me. I love that they make little travel packs. So I have a bunch of those stashed everywhere just in case I've left the house and I haven't had time to make one. But on board currently, I have a bunch of travel packs and a big bag in the fridge. So if you guys are looking to up your health and you want a really easy way of doing that, AG1 are going to give you five travel packs for free as well as a year supply of their vitamin D3 and K2 with your first purchase today. I'll pop the link just here and in the description box below as well. Thank you AG1 so much for looking after us on our travels and for supporting this video. You guys are legends. Yacht is a commercial It's a motorboat. Motor. motor but big. Very cool. Hello. Hi. Welcome. Hello. Thank you. Welcome to the boat. How are you? I'm Dan. Hi Dan. Very nice Elena. to meet you. Julia. And someone's cooking. Something smells great. And there I went, just casually stepping aboard the Sea Eagle like it ain't no thing. But inside I was kind of dying and it was such a surreal feeling. Because back in the day, Riley and I would watch Whale Wars on TV, which followed the daily lives of the Sea Shepherd crew fighting for justice on the high seas. To actually be standing on board as a filmmaker, preparing to document this vessel and her mission for my own YouTube channel was a huge deal for me. So we basically just threw our stuff in our room, we're up in the bridge now and we're about to cast off the lines and head out to sea for a couple of days. So I'm going to do the boat tour just a little bit later, I don't want to annoy everyone right now. Refueled and restocked, the crew cast off the lines and we headed out to sea where an extensive network of illegal fishing occurs, made up of tens of thousands of traps laying on the seabed. Anyway, before we get too deep into the story, my alter ego, Saskia, is going to show you around this maze of a ship with a boat tour. Jules and I are going to be sharing this double bed. There's 18 people aboard. I forget how many cabins there are. I'll put it up on the screen here. Oh, locker room. <laughs> Locked. They're all locked, <laughs> as they should be. We're on the lowest part of the boat, and I'm still so disorientated. We're gonna go up a floor and see what's there because I've already forgotten. It's just the <laughs> stairs that just go all the way up to the bridge. Come with me. <laughs> That's where we just were, just for reference. Now we're on the main deck. There's an upper deck, then there's a bridge deck, and there's a lot of really nice cabins on this floor. Let's see if anyone will let us go in there. They're really big cabins and there's never more than two beds per cabin. Nice and spacious, lots of showers and toilets just hiding around every corner. I feel like this is where the magic is at. This is the tool shed which Sebastian was apologising for before, for being messy, but it's actually really tidy. Okay, we're going into the mess. So this is the area, I'd call this the saloon. People come and hang out, eat. The galley's just through here. Coffee machine. <laughs> that is working, right? Time to turn. Time to turn. No, don't tell me that. When it's in the mood, yeah. Well, we've got instant if we need. This is our little nice galley where we cook. This and, is and our new stove. Oh, I love it. Yeah, it's it can be yeah, it can yeah. be really hot. So for me, it's so important to serve people what they love. And uh, most of the time, uh, I'm trying to make people happy. There's supposed to be something to keep them uh, going. going. Yeah, yeah because yeah. It's, it, you will see that it's really tiring job. Yeah. For me, uh, deck people are heroes. They are saving lives. I'm trying to save them uh, <laughs> from a boring themselves. foods. Yeah. And we don't like waste food, for sure. So uh, if there is too much leftover, we always serve uh, leftover days, for yeah. example. And we are so careful about the waste as well. Okay, so we just went up another level. We're on the upper deck now, where we can actually access the outside of the boat. But up here is a toilet and shower, and I think some more offices, captain's quarters, and the chef. I'm such a fool. This actually says chief, like chief officer. I thought it said chef. I'm Lauren, I'm the bosun on board the Sea Eagle at the moment. Can you show us around the, the deck? Absolutely, come with me. All right. So here we have our boat deck. 
Yeah. So we've got one small boat on this side, which we use uh, for rescuing turtles that are trapped in a line. We use it for dropping people to shore on and off, and any animal that needs rescued, we launch the boat. And if we had a person fall overboard as well, this is the boat that we'd use to pick them up. So coming past here, this is where we have one of our life rafts. So we have lots of safety equipment on board. Here we have some firefighting equipment. So at sea we have to be our own firefighters, so we have trained crew who hit up in the gear and use the equipment to fight any fire we have on board. This is our aft deck, so the very back of the ship. This is where we store all the bags of fishing gear that we pull out and where we use to dock the ship as well on the stern. So this is how to get up to the bridge from outside. The bridge is the navigation section of the, of the ship. So this is the bow deck of the ship, so the very front of the ship. This is where we dock when we're coming into port, one of our docking stations. It's also where we have our windlass which controls the anchors and it's where we store our fenders and lots of equipment for when we're going to port. We conduct all our operations from the bow um, using our net hauler there to haul up the fishing gear. Those are giant fenders. They're huge. Oh yeah. my gosh. Yeah. It's the biggest size they make, that one there. We really need it. Oh, there's a big fender. <laughs> What's that? The tutorial on how to best walk these stairs. <laughs> I like to do the side shuffle. <laughs> They're very narrow. The best part of the boat. Oh, this aircon is so nice. I hope Julia and I don't become too annoying by the end of this episode. You know how girls get when they're together? We've just been giggling non stop. I'm just holding on to this water. Are you freezing your life. nipples? Ari, second officer. We are currently on transit towards our hot area where we normally retrieve uh, octopus lines. Mm -hmm. So uh, currently here you can see lots of uh, marks, which is where we lifted up all of the flags or we detected the legal ones. So at the moment we're just heading there. It's about seven miles away, closer to the coast. So we're just gonna check the area see if the legal ones are still there and see if there is also any illegal that we can pull, basically. Oh, we very well may have our first illegal line. Let's see. I shouldn't be so excited about this. This is not, this is not good. Sea Shepherd monitors 40 kilometers of coastline around here, patrolling along over 2,000 nautical miles. To date, these guys and girls have removed over 7,672 pots from the sea, making it the largest seizure of octopus fishing traps ever in the Mediterranean Sea. So we got thrown into the basement and it's really, really hot down here. There's an air vent on the roof, which does not work. And if you shut the door, it's like a sauna in here. Like I woke up sweating, I can't sleep. It was so hot. So we've resulted to opening the door, but like everyone can see us as they walk past. But anyway, um, I'm about to try and get to sleep again. And apparently the crew found an illegal line and it takes three hours to pull up the line, which I, I did not know. So they're gonna do that tomorrow. I'm looking forward to doing that if I can sleep. <laughs> it's gonna be a long night. <laughs> no wonder Vince left. He <laughs> <laughs> wasn't invincible, was he? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Vince. I feel you. <laughs> How you doing? Super windy this morning. Sea Shepherd has an ongoing collaboration with 
the financial guard and the coast guard. This positive relationship has allowed this team to find ways to counteract three main violations they witness, including octopuses lured to the traps even during the biological rest period, catches exceeding the allowed quotas, and fishing gear left on the seabed all year round. Sea Shepherd's boats are equipped with these long line reels and the crew on board have been thoroughly trained. Because the prey in the traps is still alive, this crew brings along a marine biologist to help evaluate, case by case, the safest and least harmful way to free the octopuses and let them return to the sea. Fair to say that during this point of our voyage, I was getting strong My Octopus Teacher vibes. For anyone who hasn't watched the documentary yet, do it. These animals are so intelligent and sneaky, with the ability to change their colour patterns and even texture to match their surroundings. Getting to release so many of these sentient little beings back into the ocean was a pretty special experience, especially knowing the vital role they play in the wider ocean ecosystem. Uh, 229, no? yeah. 229. Well done! Yes! <laughs> he doesn't want to go! Okay. <laughs> what a day guys. We've just had showers, I've washed my hair. But like, hats off to these guys who can pull up to three lines a day. We just pulled one. And there's mud everywhere. It's quite hard. and. Like a couple here have got seasick because you're pulling lines, you're bending down, moving the traps, and there was a bit of swell too. So yeah, it's not the easiest work. Obviously, really rewarding when you're pulling out octopus and freeing them. Yeah, I'm super grateful I got to experience that. And it's also humbling to see that the government is working alongside Sea Shepherd and they're really thankful that these guys are here. It's just a really welcoming environment. Anyway, I'm really looking forward to some food and having a good night's sleep tonight. It's not as hot as it was yesterday, so we'll be fine. out our books because there's not a lot going on apart from the retrieval of a whole bunch of beach toys it's really windy today so I think that the wind just blew away all of their toys out to sea but this is like the fourth thing they've rescued there's been a soccer ball a giant flamingo so that's what's going on we're reading our books and the weather is super rough today it's going to be tomorrow as well we're hoping to pull up another line but yeah it's kind of a slow day <laughs> to be honest i'm getting lots of reading time in for the first time in months so i actually don't mind this is really nice being out on the ocean and without my boys for the first time i think ever was a strange feeling over the past few weeks we've experienced some extraordinary boats some sleek and speedy some with phenomenal craftsmanship and some like this one that with it opened our eyes in more ways than we could have expected Although I was looking forward to getting back to the family in Indonesia, my Europe trip was actually only just kicking off. After we disembarked Sea Eagle, we had some really fun things planned. Cheers, Jules. How's your time Cheers, aboard Jules. been? Really nice. I've enjoyed it. I mean, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't pull the line I was filming. <laughs> hey, but I couldn't have done it without you. you'll be able to hear me this morning has just been kind of one long breakfast because yeah we can't pull any lines it's the weather's too rough and also our black water tank is full 
We could either drive really far out to sea to empty it, but in the end it was better for us to go to the dock and now we're going into shore in this beautiful little coastal town in Italy. They've just fired up the engine, we're just going into the port now, but I was going to say tonight's going to be a fun night because Conrad, which is the other Sea Shepherd boat that's in the port, they didn't come out yesterday to join us because the weather was so rough, they decided to just stay tied off. They're going to join us for dinner, so we get to meet more crew from a different boat and then we're hitting the town. So stick around for that and actually Julia and I are going to Rome the following day and this is my vlog so I can do whatever I want with it. Come and join us in Rome for a little girls trip if you aren't sick of hearing me and Julia giggle. Show us how it's done. desert out here my friends and we've got to go down there add up again We shared some gnarly sea tales between us that evening and a few of us went to find probably the only bit of nightlife in this otherwise very quiet little village. hunt for a smoothie this morning but it, it just ain't gonna happen <laughs> this town is really local so yeah that's not a lot of um cafes with the smoothies i love <laughs> which is okay we will survive but today of all days i'm really craving one last night was like a 2 a.m night or morning I, I can't remember the last time i stayed up till 2 a.m it's been really strange but fun to be this independent woman going to bed at ungodly hours <laughs> And yeah, we said goodbye to the crew this morning. What are you doing? Did you take us the wrong way? Oh. We said goodbye to the crew. They're heading out to sea. Oh, what an experience. I have to say that I'm really happy to be on land. Just to be moving my legs. It's a tough life, being on a boat. Berlin at the moment, surprise, since we left the Sea Shepherd boat, me and Julia had the best time in Rome, then I went to visit Jack and Fran in uh, Anziel, that's where Fran grew up, and I tell you, the universe works in crazy ways because Fran grew up on that coastline, and she said that there were these ancient ruins, this old Roman dock that was built, and lots of rock pools were in the ocean, and she said like in September, she used to be able to walk into these rock pools as a little girl and hundreds of octopus would come out and now she doesn't see a single octopus. It was really sad to hear that obviously but all of my feelings and just being aboard the Sea Shepherd and having kind of that whole story confirmed with a real case, it was a nice way to kind of wrap up that trip I suppose. So yeah, they're doing really good things. Thank you guys so much for having me and Julia on board. It was really eye-opening and hats off to you guys. It's hard work. Sea Shepherd run off donations and they're bloody legends. It'd be super cool if you wanted to make a donation. I'll pop the link in the description box below. Now I'm in Berlin visiting another friend and in three days I go back to Bali to see the kids and rally. I'm really looking forward to that. But it's also been so much fun as you would have seen from all the clips. <laughs> Just do my own thing for a bit. I'm actually thinking of making more just fun videos that aren't always sailing over on my personal channel. 
I'll pop the card up here. I originally started making like baby videos when I thought I was into the whole mum vlogging scene, but quickly realized that it didn't really interest me. So I'm rebranding. Yes, you could also follow me over there if you wanted to. If not, that's cool. That's all for me. Thank you for being here. It's been a bloody good time.